welcome to another gospel-kingdom.com video. In this video, if you see me discussing a page on my website, you will see a picture of that website and a link to that page. You'll see a pink area with a circled name of that link. So just go to the website as shown here and click on that link as shown in the picture and you will go to that page. You will also find the link in the description below the video. I also want to state if you wish to watch my videos faster you can easily do so by clicking on the gear icon in the bottom corner of the screen then click on the playback speed and put it on 1.25 you'll watch my videos much faster this is how I watch other videos so I get through the videos much quicker alright thank you enjoy the video and have a good day Hello, we have a new video today. Today we're going to talk about the Ezekiel 38-39 war. I have discussed this coming war that has been prophesied to come many times. In my last video, which was my first prophecy alert, I stated I would discuss the ramifications of Trump's peace plan with the Ezekiel 38 war, but failed to do so in that video. But you can see that video here. It is my prophecy alert video, the last video I made. I will not only discuss the ramifications of the Ezekiel 38 war with Trump's peace plan, but we'll go over several facets of the significance of this coming war. Most of this will be at the end of the video, so please watch through the whole video to get to that. First, I wish to discuss the trigger most people who study prophecy believe will cause the Ezekiel 38 war. And that is found in Isaiah chapter 17. I believe the whole chapter is significant, but for time's sake, I will only read verse 1. But again, I believe there is a relevant prophecy to be discovered in the whole chapter and may contain revelation on the time of the event right before the Ezekiel 38 war as well as the events after it. So here we go, Isaiah 17, verse 1. The burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a heap of ruins. Damascus is the capital of Syria and is the oldest inhabited city on earth. Even now, much of it is destroyed due to the wars in Syria. I will show two maps of Syria, and you can see where Damascus lies. Here are two pictures of maps of Syria. We do not know what will cause Damascus, Damascus's total destruction, nor who will do it. Obviously, the biggest suspect is Israel. For if they do it, this will trigger those nations who will attack Israel, shown in Ezekiel 38 and 39. But it might be the United States or someone else. It is believed by some that some of the missing weapons of mass destruction from Iraq were hidden in Damascus and brought there. If one of those weapons was hit by another weapon or was triggered, this could cause the destruction of Damascus. If the U.S. does it, many Muslim nations would retaliate on Israel as well, since they cannot take on the U.S. themselves and will only want an excuse to attack Israel anyways. But the, dest but the destruction of Damascus most likely will be the trigger for the Ezekiel 38 war. We don't know for sure, but many of us believe this to be so. It is my opinion and that of others that the rapture will probably occur at the destruction of Damascus or the Ezekiel 38 war. I think there is a 50% chance we may see Damascus' destruction, but I doubt those, rapture, those who are rapture ready will see the Ezekiel 38 war itself. Now to the main event. I will read much of Ezekiel 38 and 39, but not all of it, and I will shorten many of the verses. But here we go. Ezekiel 38, we're starting verse 2, we're going to go to verse 6. Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief ruler of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. 
and say, So says the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the chief ruler of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you back and put hooks in your jaws and will bring you out and all your army, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Torgama from the recesses of the north and all his bands and many peoples with you. Here we see God tell Ezekiel which nations will attack Israel. I could just tell you who these are, but wish to interject a five minute clip I put together from John Barnett from his YouTube channel DTBM. This is from his 40 minute video titled, Are Russia and Iran in the Bible in the book of Ezekiel? And you can find his whole video here. It's an excellent video if you want to know more about the details on the Ezekiel 38 war from what I'm doing here. If you wish to skip this clip, it is only five minutes long, and, and I will list these na nations in their modern names afterwards. But I do recommend watching this five-minute clip as he is a great historian as well as a good Bible teacher. Here we go, a five-minute clip. What do the people that lived a long time ago say about this? Okay, Ezekiel was written, Ezekiel, here's for perspective, Ezekiel was written in the 6th century B.C. The 6th century B.C. Hesiod wrote in the 8th century B.C. He was writing 200 years before Ezekiel. This Greek teaching, didactic means teaching poet, equated the Magogians with the Scythians or Scythians. Now Herodotus, he's called the father of history, just like we have the father of medicine and everything else uh, from the, the Greek uh, world. The father of history, now a century after. Now look where we've gotten to. This is a hundred years after Ezekiel. Herodotus called the the Scythians, the ones who were associated with Magog. So for 300 years, they have remained as, as being associated. And what he does, Herodotus tells us where they came from. He said they're a 10th century BC warrior group. And then we go into other Greek philosophers and Jewish ones, uh, Josephus, a historian. He, when Josephus talked about what, what, we would know as the Great Wall of China, he called that area where the wall was built the ramparts of Gog and Magog, that the, the Chinese building their Great Wall were building it to hold out and hold back these northerners that were invading them, that, and they called the Great Wall the ramparts of Gog and Magog. So Another interesting little piece, and this is from the first century, but the first exhibit in the Kremlin was how they showed that their ancestors were the Scythians who came from, and these are the, the Russian words, the Srubnaya and the Adronovo uh, people that, and I'll show you a map of them, that were from the uttermost parts of the north. So where were these where were these Scythians from? They were from this part of the world, right up here. The Scythians, and that way, going to the far north. But they were known as the people that were, these are the Caucasus Mountains. And it, it's kind of like a little divider here on this, this between the, the Caspian and the uh, Black Sea. The, the Caucasus Mountains were kind of like a divider, and the Scythians were on one side, and the Roman Empire was on the other side. In verse 5, Persia, that's this, this Parthian uh, area over here that to this day is not very happy about Israel. Uh, Libya, or Put, which is Algeria and Libya and Tunisia, again, part of the North African Muslim uh, group of people that are not real excited about Israel's existence. Kush down here, Sudan, uh, actually is manufacturing missiles for Iran. So you can tell where their loyalties are. Um, and then it starts naming off in, in up here in verse 2, 
Set your face against Gog and Magog, and the princes of Rosh and Meshach and Tubal. Uh, you know, basically, it's talking about this whole region here, which would be modern-day Turkey, and the people from beyond the Caucasus, which are these Scythians. But who is it? Well, it's, I mean, look in your Bible. We'll, we'll list them off. Verse 5 has Persia, a.k.a. Iran. Um, the the uh, Cush is next, which, you know, your Bible might say Ethiopia, but that's really South Cush. If you want all Cush, you've got to have Sudan, too. Put, which is the north shore, I mean, the north part of Africa, the south shore of the Mediterranean, which is Libya, Algeria, might even be Tunisia. Uh, Gomer, which is, and, and uh, um, another term for Turkey, and then Togarma, which could easily be all of these, uh, what we call the stands, you know, the, the uh, Tajikistan and Kazakhstan and, and all the stands, which are basically... Um, Muslim today, and then Meshach and Tubal, which are the ancient Scythians and modern Russians. Okay, the nations as known by today's names are most likely are Russia, Iran, Turkey, Sudan, Libya, and or Algeria, the Stans, or the Central Asian Muslim, Muslim nations. Here are two maps which may be fairly, fairly accurate to the names listed here and from that clip. Here are two Ezekiel 38 maps. Okay, back to Ezekiel 38. We're going to read verses 8 through 13. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you shall come into the land, turn back from the sword, gathered out of many peoples on the mountains of Israel. And you shall go up, coming like a storm. And it shall be in that day that things shall come into your heart, and you shall devise an evil plan, in order to take a spoil on the people gathered out of the nations, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all their young lions, shall say to you, Have you come to take a spoil? Here we see this war is considered to be in the end times. These verses call it latter years. These nations will attack Israel, which is shown to have come back from out of all the nations. This occurred in May of 1948, when Israel came back as a nation on the earth. As Jews from all over the world moved back to the land of promise. Also, as an interesting thing is stated in verse 13, that some will speak against this war, but they do not help Israel, but will protest against the attack against Israel. Most believe Sheba and or Dedan is Saudi Arabia, which lately has been becoming allies with Israel in help against Iran. And the merchants of Tarshish may refer to Great Britain, and their young lions would be those nations which sprang from their colonies. Thus, the United States may be one of those young lions. So we see the U.S. will only protest against this attack against Israel, but will not help if this is the U.S. spoken here. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 38. We're going to read verses 14 through 20. In that day when my people of Israel dwell securely, and you shall come from your place out of the recesses of the north, you and many peoples with you. And you shall come upon my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the last days, and I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me, and I shall be sanctified in you, O Gog, before their eyes. And it shall be on that day when God comes out of the land of Israel, says the Lord Jehovah, my fury shall come up in my face, for in my jealousy and in my fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great quaking in the land of Israel. All the men on the face of the earth shall quake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. 
Here again, we see God states that this is part of the end times. He states in verse 16, it shall be in the last days. And also, we, are, we see something very important in verse 16 as well. And that is the nations will know he is sanctified in Israel. And we begin to see that God himself, in his anger, will protect Israel when the other nations do not. He then describes an earthquake. Israel has been hit with a few minor earthquakes in the last few years, more than likely tremors to come of this earthquake. But I also believe it, it is very possible there is a spiritual significance here. He speaks of walls falling down, but I believe that this, and also the high places falling down, this may represent the fall of denominations in the days after this, as the rapture will take those Christians ready and the rest of the Christians left behind will either join Mystery Babylon or go underground after repenting and hide as Mystery Babylon will seek to kill any Christians afterwards. I discuss these things here. The Great Apostasy and Mystery Babylon. Check out my video there. I also want to state other things were going to begin to fall at that time. Other religions, Islam and such as that. But I will talk more about the Islam's fall later in this video. All right, so let's finish Ezekiel 38. We're going to read verses 21 through 23. And I will call for a sword against him on all my mountains. Each man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will judge him with a plague and with blood. And I will rain on him and on his bands and on the many peoples with him an overflowing shower and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. So I will magnif magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Here we see that the armies of these nations will begin to attack each other, instead, right in the middle of God's defense of Israel. We see a plague and blood, perhaps a biological weapon, or a disease by God strikes them supernaturally. We see hailstones, fire, and brimstone, perhaps a meteor shower, will strike these armies. And again, God says he will make himself known to the world during this battle by his defense of Israel. And so I believe this ends what some call the age of grace or the church age. It will no longer be a time of faith without seeing as miracles and signs and wonders will hit the earth and by both sides. The false prophet will begin to manifest signs, but also those Christians who do repent will participate in what is called the latter rain. And I will dis discuss more about that later. But also about this time, the two witnesses listed in Revelation will probably show up. These last two day prophets more than likely are Moses and Elijah. They will appear and minister in Jerusalem for I believe three and a half years or some similar time frame. I don't have that studied out here. Just want to mention, I believe it's that this time they will probably come forth onto the scene. Now, some people, a minority, I believe, think this ends the description of the war. But most prophecy students and scholars believe that Ezekiel 39 continues with this event. And I believe so as well. This is why it is sometimes called the Ezekiel 38-39 war. So let's continue in Ezekiel 39. Once again, skipping a few of the verses and shortening others for time's sake. Ezekiel 39, 1 through 5. Prophesy against Gog and say, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the chief ruler of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and I will strike your bow out of your left hand and will cause your arrows to fall out of your sight, out of your right hand. You shall fall on the mountains of Israel, you and all your bands and the people with you. I will give you for food to the birds of every prey of every kind and to the beasts of the field. You shall fall on the face of the field, for I have spoken, says the Lord Jehovah. I want to talk about Gog now. More than likely, this is Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. I have believed that Gog is a demon who possesses Putin, but now I believe it may just be his title from the ancient days. But I still do believe he will be possessed by a spirit to do these things and it appears that this may have already happened. 
he has been getting more and more upset with Israel in the last two years. But a couple of other things have happened lately concerning him. The Russian prime minister has resigned after being in office since 2012. His resignation comes after Putin held discussions to give more power to parliament and to the president's cabinets. I will link to two articles about this below. A proposal has now been brought forth by the Russian government to change the title of president or head of state to supreme leader. I will share a link to this crazy update as well down below in the description. For those who don't know, Putin was part of the KGB, that is a Russian spy, during the time they were communists. Now in those verses in Ezekiel 39 through 1 through 5, we find out that Putin himself will be in the field. He will be actually at the attack of Israel and will die there. But let's continue with Ezekiel chapter 39. We're going to read verses 6 and 7. And I will send a fire on Magog and on the secure inhabitants of the coasts, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Here we see not only God will wipe out their armies, but will send fire on parts of their homelands, Russia in particular, and whoever the inhabitants of the coasts are. I, I will link to two articles about volcanoes in Russia below. Particularly of interest is what was considered a dormant volcano may be waking up in Russia at this time. So please see the links below if you're interested in that. All right, let's continue on in Ezekiel chapter 39. We're going to read verses 9 and 10. And the inhabitants of the cities of Israel shall go out and shall set on fire and burn the weapons. And they shall burn them with fire seven years, so that they shall take no wood out of the field, nor cut down any of the forests. For they shall burn the weapons for fire, and they shall plunder those who plundered them, and rob those who robbed them. Now I used this scripture in my beginning of Soros video, believing that this seven years has to end at the midpoint of the tribulation, because the Jews will have to flee Israel when the Antichrist breaks his covenant with them after three and a half years. Therefore, I thought there must be another three and a half years before this, before the tribulation. Thus, believing Ezekiel 38 war happens at least that much before the tribulation. However, I now see that it says the inhabitants of Israel, the, the cities of Israel, not Israelites themselves. Therefore, those people who come to Israel with the Antichrist will probably continue the cleanup of the Ezekiel 38 war. But to the scripture itself, this may be an, of nuclear material that they will have to use to power Israel for those seven years. And the cleanup of the nuclear, nuclear or biological weapons may take this long to do so. But these two verses are very interesting indeed. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 39. We're going to read verses 11 through 15. And it will be in that day, I will give to Gog a place there, a grave in Israel, and they shall bury Gog and his multitude. And the house of Israel shall bury them to cleanse the land seven months. And the men shall separate those who continually pass through the land, burying those who pass through, who remain on the face of the earth to cleanse it. At the end of the seven months, they, they shall search. And as they pass, those who pass through the land, any man who sees a bone, then shall build a post beside it, until the barriers have buried it in the valley of the multitude of Gog. So we see Putin will have his grave here, as well as the large army from all these nations who attacked Israel. But we continue to see what appears to be a cleanup of biological weapons, or again, a supernatural plague which struck them. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 39. Let's read verses 21 and 22. And I will set my glory among the nations, and all the nations shall see my judgments which I have done, and my hand that I have laid on them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am Jehovah, their God, from that day forward. 
So we see, not only does the world see God's hand, but now Israel itself will see God is with them. And some of them will repent and accept Jesus as the Messiah from God. All right, let's go to verse 29. Nor will I hide my face from them anymore, for I have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord Jehovah. This last verse is amazing and evidences something that I've believed in recent years, but now helps solidify that thought. The Ezekiel 38 war brings about the latter rain. Now I do discuss the latter rain in this video here, the latter rain. Please check out that video if you want to know more about the latter rain and the details therein. Now shortly and brief, the latter rain is the end time outpouring of the Holy Spirit not only on the church, but on some of the Israelites who accept Jesus as the Messiah. And thus the miracles of God will become more visible. Again, it is more than likely that the two witnesses spoken of in Revelation will appear in Jerusalem at this time or near this time. Now this video is already getting long and I've shared much scripture. Thus I won't delve into it here, but I believe that Joel chapters 1 and 2, which discusses the latter rain, also discusses the Ezekiel 38 war as it shares this invading army into Israel and uses fire to desolate the northern parts of the land. Please check out Joel 1 and 2 in light of this. So let's look at the modern events which are lining up with this prophecy. By the way, if you don't believe this prophecy at all, Ezekiel prophesied another event which has already come true. And that is the destruction of Tyre, Tyre, the city-state of Tyre. If I have room for it, and I think I will, I will link to a seven-minute video concerning the fulfillment of that prophecy. Now, this is not my video, but it's a really good video, seven minutes long. It shows about the fulfillment of the prophecy by Ezekiel of the destruction of Tyre. And you can see that video here, if I have room. Otherwise, I will link to it in the description below. It is titled, the prophecy of Tyre, proof for God. Anyways, back to the prophecy of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Let's look at the modern events leading to this event. To the northeast of Israel lies the nation of Syria. And Syria has been in war and civil war for several years now. Let's look at another map of these two nations of Israel and Syria. In the last few years, Russia, Iran, and Turkey all are in Syria due to these wars. And these three nations are major players of the Ezekiel 38-39 war. They are already there to the north of Israel. They also have been working together, making treaties and deals with each other. Here is a picture of the leaders of these nations together, thus including Putin. Also in Syria is the United States, and they hold some of Syria's oil fields, either most of them or the big ones. This was one of the major reasons why Russia came to Syria, to help them so that they could get oil. But because America is holding it, they are not getting their oil. While Russia produces oil, their cost is higher as it is deeper in the ground than most other places. So they can't sell it at a profit at this time because America is producing oil due to Trump's promoting oil exploration and drilling in the States. In fact, America is now the biggest exporter of oil in the world. But Russia is not only angry at this, but because they are allied with Iran and Syria, they have been getting upset with Israel when Israel attacks Iran's military presence in Syria as Iran wishes to destroy Israel. And to make the matter worse, Syria has begun to help Iran in these efforts. Thus, Israel has been targeting Syrian military targets as well in the last year or two, which Russia has told them not to do. Russia has been keeping a blind eye on Israel's attacks against Iran in Syria, knowing that Iran's intent. But, a, but direct strikes against Syria has been too much for Russia to allow. Thus, Russia is getting frustrated with this situation. And in fact, a year or two ago, 
One of their own planes was shot down by either Ir Iranian or Syrian forces by accident trying to retaliate against Israel. Right now, America's presence protects Israel, mostly from Russia and Turkey, as Turkey is an ally of America as they are part of NATO. But Turkey in recent years has been slipping further away from the U.S. and Europe and becoming more Muslim and more aligned with Russia and recently has even bought military equipment from them. But now I must discuss the Muslim situation. Just as Christianity has denominations, Islam has two major factions, Shiite and Sunni. I'm no expert here, but Saudi Arabia is one type and Iran is the other. Iran's belief system believes that they will bring about their Messiah by starting an apocalyptic war with Israel. Thus why some Muslims are radical and are terrorists. They think they are helping their Messiah come by promoting a giant apocalyptic war with Israel. But not only does Iran and these type of Muslims hate Israel, they also hate the other type of Muslims as well. Thus why they attack Saudi Arabia. And this is why these nations have finally decided the enemy of my enemy is my friend and thus have started becoming friends with Israel. Saudi Arabia in the last few months has been doing a lot with Israel and become allies and friends and working with them. Both Turkey and Iran wish to be the dominating Islamic force in the world. So we're at odds at each other a bit with this. They also have a division due to tribal or ethnic differences, but are aligned in their hatred with Israel and their faith. It may be the tension between these two which will cause them to attack each other when the Ezekiel 38 war begins to fall apart due to God's intervention. For now, they are working together with Russia for some kind of agreement in Syria. Russia does not have a religious reason to attack Israel, but Iran and Turkey does. Thus, Putin, who is Gog, who is going to lead the Ezekiel 38 attack, does so for spoil, as Ezekiel 38 states, as Israel in the last few months has begun producing and exporting natural gas. I believe America's presence in Syria is a significance here. When America gets hit with the rapture and possible other disasters in its coming judgment, we will leave Syria. Someone will respond, I believe, to this action Perhaps so, Russia, or perhaps so, because Russia or these other countries won't get the oil in Syria. Thus, perhaps how, why, and why Damascus is destroyed. But this is only a recent guess of mine as I look at these events. I do not know. But something will cause Damascus to be destroyed, which I believe will trigger Russia to allow Iran and Turkey to attack Israel and even join them. By the way, when I say... The rapture will hit America. It's going to hit the whole world, but America has more Christians in it than most other countries. Thus, it'll affect America worse. All right, so when God destroys Turkey and Iran, this will be a major blow to the Islamic faith, particularly of that type and division. Something similar happened at the end of World War II when America nuked Japan, as at that time there was a Japanese emperor who the Japanese people worshipped. And when Japan was defeated, the worship of the emperor ended. Thus, when Islam loses against the God of Israel, Islam will begin to fall. In step with this, the Antichrist and the false prophet will show up. The Antichrist will step in and offer peace to Israel, perhaps even offering to protect it since America has fallen. The Antichrist will take up Trump's peace plan and increase it. Again, see my video, Prophecy Alert, for more on that. He will most likely offer protection, and since Islam has fallen, he will allow Israel to build their temple on the Temple Mount since the Islamic objection has now ceased or greatly diminished. This is the significance of the Ezekiel 38 war to the end times. The false prophet will also step in and recruit the leftover Muslims into his new religion. Scripture may point to a couple other wars after this. This may be the Antichrist finishing off the other Muslim nations and protecting Israel as well. 
But while it may seem to Israel he is defending them, the Antichrist worships Satan and does not want any other type of worship in the world and will eventually have the world worship him. While we don't know all the details, Ezekiel gives us many, but we begin to understand these things when we add Isaiah 17 as well as Joel chapter 1 and 2. Now I've given my thoughts on how this will play out, but only time will tell. I believe these events will be here soon and the rapture as well. So hopefully I've given you a greater understanding of the Ezekiel 38-39 war, the importance of it concerning the end times, and all the players and what they're going to be doing and operating in this. So hopefully this video has blessed you. Once again, you can share this video with others or the information I have on it. Either way, thank you, God bless, and have a good day.